talked about this yesterday. <laughs> the true test of fitness. <laughs> <laughs> the ingredients are just organic egg whites. Egg whites. We're going to chug this thing right now. I mean, I'm going to throw up right on this damn table <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of this thing. <laughs> you want to go viral or not, bro? Oh. You're listening to Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I'm Will Meldman here with Brock O'Hearn, the co-host, beautiful co-host. We, uh, we have a special guest today, um, Peter Pisani. Nailed it. AKA P- Pistol Pete. There we go. Love oh it. Oh my God, yeah. With Fit Stop. Like grown man. And many other things. <laughs> um, if you like nutrition, fitness, health, you're going to like this episode. So. If you like handsome, fit men. <laughs> Every time I walk into a place, like honestly, I've met Brock a, co- a couple of times now. And every time I walk, I'm just like, I can't be around this man for too long. He's literally, he's just like, there's gravitas. I'm the go- most good looking man, but he's so fucking nice too. I can say fuck on here too, right? You say whatever you want, bro. I'm just like, well, you can why say whatever you want so when you're complimenting fucking, me, bro. Yeah, why you is know? he so fucking nice and good looking? <laughs> yeah, well, it takes one to know one, and we've got a table full of that. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think it's like for the boys. sitting next to him all the time, it's like, how do I cope with that? Yeah. But I just find a way. You're just always trying to find a reason to hate him. It's just like, why? <laughs> why <You> know, is he? <laughs> I've, I've dealt with that my whole life, man. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. But you know what it is? I think it's just like all large men in general. Like most of them, big, big guys are just like the nicest, sweetest human beings in the world. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's just like, I don't know if it's like a product of growing up and just being always thought of like, oh, who's this large, intimidating human, right? Yeah. I think what I've dealt with, um, and, and a lot of friends who are, you know, in that category too, is mm-hmm. you get looked at and a lot of people are afraid of you. So you have to disarm people. So naturally you get to the point where you're like, I want to make everyone feel comfortable here. Right. Like I've, I've made myself shorter. Uh, I've, I've not stood up, you know, during conversations, mm-hmm. like I've done, you know, just do whatever I can to make people, but it's also a, a nature thing too. Like I don't have to prove that I'm tough or I'm the big guy or I can fight or whatever. I don't care about any of that. You yeah. Know? My thing is I want everyone to get along and have a good time. And, and if I can help, you know, advocate that, then yeah, let's go do it. You know? But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's true though, <laughs> yeah. because I think honestly, it's just stature and size, right? There's always kind of like, it's a thing that men do in general though. It's just sizing up kind of like thing. Like when yeah. you step into a room with Constantly. guys and you're just like, yeah. but I bet you're going to take his ass. It's like, but yeah. the harsh reality is just like, why do we do that? Right. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like we're a mammals, rage shit. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. we're not that far into human development, right? I right. guess. And it, like, it, you know, it's, when we want to act tough, we like puff our chests out. When you shake a hand, it's firm. You look someone in the eye, right? Like all these things are very animalistic kind of instincts, but we do them anyway. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's, and you're correct. I think for the most part, the world I live in, right, of group fitness, and when it comes to being approachable and non-intimidating, it's such a huge factor, right? And as far as just running a business, because it's like, you know, guys of our stature and our size, we'd love to get into stuff because we want to express that, right? We want to, you know, have it be our job or our, sen- our sense of business. And, you know, when people walk into a space and they see people like Rock or myself, they just go, well, like that's unachievable. Like what? Like can I even talk to that guy? It's like would I even want to operate in that space because of these humans? And the thing is, it's like humanizing yourself and approaching it with like, hey, I'm here for you. I'm gonna give you a smile. I'm gonna give you a nice compliment. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I am approachable. Uh, we always have to be cautiously aware of those things because yeah. of our stature. I think absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I'm, and making sure someone feels comfortable <laughs> in that space too is is if it appears unattainable to somebody else mm. and you end up being the you know person that goes out of your way to make them feel that way, feel good, and you realize like, look, I've got my own problems, I've got my own injuries, you know, I've got my own you know life that gets yeah. in the way a lot of times and, and I'm still showing up, I still have the discipline to get through it all, you have it too. It's right. no different for you. Like, I mean, you have your stuff, but it's it's not that it's unattainable. It's that what what work are you willing to do? Mm. Are you going to say I can't do it because you know I can't do what that guy's doing? It's impossible. It's whatever. It's whatever story you're telling yourself. Right. But if someone like you is in the space in the group fitness space and you're willing to go out of your way to help people, mm. you can show them the way because there's certain things, habits that we have that change all the results. It change the way we think about it, the way we feel about it. And that's why that group fitness thing is so great too. Cause I've always loved working out solo or, mm. you know, with one or two training partners that are, you know, on the level we can push, really push each other. Right. That's where group fitness comes into such uh, great spaces. Like you get an energy in there 
and then everyone's going hard. Everyone's working towards a better goal and bettering themselves. And, and it's, that's a special thing in its own right, you know? Yeah, no, and I, look, I've been in group fitness for, gosh, 15, 15 plus years now. Um, and I think I've touched just about every modality outside of maybe Zumba. Um, but that's, that's next. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry, I'll be dancing, dancing yeah. in class here shortly. Uh, just like yesterday with the three of us working out yeah. and just kind of just enjoying that time. And, you know, I think in the bodybuilding world, it's, uh, it's always been the solo act, right? Where it's just like you against the world, right? And it is a super lonely process, I think, for a lot of people. And I got into it right after I got done with uh, school. And I was a, you know, a former football player, basketball player kind of a situation. And I love the sense of camaraderie, co competition, um, the, the bullshitting, like just having fun with your buddies while you're in the weight room, right? And you kind of lose that because it is you against the world yeah. in the bodybuilding world. And, you know, it's one of those things where, I was just like, gosh, does this fit for me? Is this something that I, you know, do I want to be in this space by myself, just being like kind of this lone wolf and this lone soldier? And then it was just literally getting back into what I would consider group fitness, just working out with the guys, working out with the buds, right? Yeah. And going through these terrible workouts, but enjoying the time and enjoying that kind of like mutual suffering, yeah. um, but also the forced engagement. Like we had to interact, right? We had to talk, we had to like compete with each other, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I really fell in love with. And I think that's probably why, you know, group fitness was such a pull for me versus just, you know, ending up in that, in that solo world of bodybuilding. Yeah. Forever. So I, that's actually really interesting. Cause I have like a, I have a question on that. Yeah. So I totally agree with everything you said, like in high school, our football team, our lacrosse team, we'd push each other and be like, okay, what are you benching now? What are you free weighting now? Like, come on. And as an adult though, I got more and more into an individual personal trainer. I still work out with a few friends here and there. Um, but I also have like social anxiety as well that I deal with. So like, what would you tell someone like me that's more like, you know, I, and now I've just kind of work out alone, <laughs> but you know, I've developed a sort of structure for myself. What would you tell someone like me that would, how can I benefit from getting into kind of that group setting again? Yeah, no, I mean, look, I'm, I live in a world of, um, you know, I think accessible strength training, right? With uh, a company like FitStop. Um, and we'll get into the programming, the understanding of that all here in a little bit. But, you know, for the ones that are maybe wanting to try it, right? For the ones that are just a little bit unsure, it's just like, I think it's the realization that, you know, all the people that are in these group fitness classes, they're all looking to better themselves, right? They're all looking, of course, to get a little bit uncomfortable with the surroundings. I mean, I tell many people all the dang time, it's like the first time I took a CrossFit class or I wanted to take a CrossFit class down in San Diego, I stood outside or I, I sat in my car, my truck, this little tiny truck, this S10 that I had for what was probably two hours watching people come in and out. And I was a big guy, like I was a former fo football player. And I'm like, God, this is the most intimidating thing. And I was like, I've, I've played in front of thousands of people before, and yet I can't get my ass out of this car to just go walk in and try and just talk to somebody just because of the level of intimidation that was involved, not only in CrossFit, but within just like this group atmosphere, because it is a vulnerable space, right? And I think, you know, people that do deal with social anxiety and do deal with like issues of like, you know, just like coming into faults or like showing a little bit of a vulnerability or weakness in front of other people. It's, it's a social, like it's, it, it's anxiety riddled, right? Um, but the level of discomfort, I think, you know, that is a, is a product, but the level of then comfort and the level of support and the level of, hey, we're all in this together. I think that just out, outweighs like every, everybody's like initial thought to it, right? Yeah. Um, it's just getting past that initial hurdle of saying, I can do this, let me test this, let me see, because you're correct. I think it's just the human, it's naturally in us like as human beings to say, I don't wanna to touch this stuff. I don't wanna be like seen as like the guy that's not athletic or isn't strong enough, or, you know, I have body issues. Um, it, it, what I usually tell people, right, especially if it's like to that level and that degree, find somebody to go with, yeah. right? Find that buddy, find that girlfriend, that boyfriend, whatever it might be, and force the engagement with them. And it's gonna help you overcome those hurdles because you trust that individual, right? Right. And getting to the level of trust inside of a group atmosphere takes some time, right? So, but if you can find somebody that's gonna, you know, it's like, hey, just 
can you come suffer with me for a little bit? Right, right. I think it makes a world of difference. That's yeah. really good advice. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it takes time. It takes time just like anything else. Though. I think we should just, you know, dive into your North American uh, head of, what, what's the exact title? So Peter Hall, the founder of FitStop, Australian guy, right? Um, has done an incredible job, a hundred and or 115th location. Wow. wow. Yeah. So number one here in the States. Uh, but 114 total throughout uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore now. Whew, amazing. Yeah, done a phenomenal job as far as just generating a massive community, uh, very successful operations, great program. Um, yeah, I mean, phenomenal, right? And I remember when he pulled me over and he's like, hey, dude, he goes, I love what you did for F45. Um, I think it was you know awesome to see what, of course, you and Corey created from not only like a... Uh, a branding standpoint, but just kind of how you deliver the message. Uh, I would love it if you came and do it, for, did it for me too as well. And you know, for me, <laughs> jumping back into franchise fitness, especially another Australian brand, I was like, "Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this again." Um, and it's not that I didn't have uh, a great time with F forty five. I just I saw the ebbs and flows, right? I saw the great, I saw the bad um, when it came to franchise fitness, and you know, I, I was like, you know what? happy to come out and have a conversation with you. We'll talk it through. He goes, let me fly you out for a week, right? Get and it's a sense tough of the brand. too, like you, if you just did one type of thing, it's tough to dive right back into one type of thing. I think exactly. everyone can like relate to that. Right. And, you know, for me, you know, there was, it was, it was more or less being a face of a brand, you know, with myself and Corey with F45. I mean, we were the poster children for a number of years and we loved our jobs. We really did. We had a great time together. We had a blast doing what we did. Um, but it was more from an educational standpoint, an operational standpoint. Mm -hmm. We just help these people try to be successful outside of their four to five studios. And being like so credited in that space and just being so in the, in the, in the public eye of that network, I was just like, I can't, it's like, it's like when LeBron went from Cleveland to Miami, you know, it was one of those things where it's just like, I know I'm going to get hated for this because yeah. I'm going to maybe more or less a direct competitor of a product. And completely different workouts. Um, I understand the space in itself, but it's another Australian brand. And so they're just mm -hmm. like, dude, it's like, what is the deal with you and freaking these franchise like firms out of Australia? And I, I, I literally, it was probably more no for me for like the longest time. And until I went out, met him, met the team, saw the products, got to touch and feel the product. Um, and I was just like, man, as much as I don't want to do this, I know it's going to do well. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be, it's going to be a game changer, I think for like group fitness space in the US and I think it's missing um, uh, the product itself is it's like it's it's found its niche um, now we just have to express it in a different market and he was like well what do you what do you want your title to be and I was like well man it's like I'm a trainer right I love being like thought of as a trainer I love being a coach um, I've been called you know god knows how many different titles within the space I was a performance director I was the head of like education I was like, just make me the AD, right? And it's like, I'll be your athletic director for North America. Of course, we got a team out and I was, that does a phenomenal job from an athletic director standpoint. But I was like, yeah, just give me that title. I was like, does it change my salary at all? He was like, nope. But I was like, okay, we'll just keep it at director. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of, that's how I ended up in it. But- um, Should have hit him with the, the CEO. I know. <laughs> I, I, I was like, we should probably put a C in front of that somewhere yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just to get to there. No, honestly, he's been, uh, Pete's been great, man. Um, like I said, incredible brand, incredible like network. He's been very calculated um, with his expansion uh, throughout Australia, New Zealand, and of Amazing. course, Singapore now here. Uh, and he'll continue to do that. I think, you know, it is a franchise product, uh, but he's very, he vets anybody and everybody that comes into the space, especially mm -hmm. if they're going to represent his brand, right? Smart, yeah. And that's something I think people need to be re very aware of is that, you know, the people you hire, and it goes on both sides too. You know, mm -hmm. if you're hired into a company and you're not performing, you're not showing up or you're not doing all the things, like people forget that you're hired and you're representing this brand. Mm -hmm. You're representing this company. And so if you're messing up, it's a reflection of the company and, and then their investment into you. So yeah. it's it's a double-edged sword at the, at the end of the day. So the fact that you know he's aware of that, you're aware of that obviously speaks to the success of the company, right? Correct, correct. And it's such a huge component. Um, look, I love what had happened with F45, but our expansion plan was just hit the gas and don't look back, mm -hmm. right? Let's see how many of these things we can pop up. And I'm not saying like it wasn't feasible, right? Uh, as far as the product itself, yeah, you could stand these things up fairly fast, but it comes to the operations 
the trainers, the people that give a crap. Like it just, it, we were Finding, moving it at an incredible pace. So you have to find the people to fill those roles and Correct. have them fill them correctly, right? Yeah. yeah. How, how many from when you came on with that 45, um, with within a few years, I guess, about how, how fast did that expansion happen? Like how many places were opened and, mm. and what did you see with that? Yeah. Um, gosh, when I came on, they had mostly covered of a lot of Australia. I think they had probably 500 units in Australia at the moment. Uh, and they were trying, I mean, not trying, they had been in the US and I'd seen a couple of them pop up in San Diego. And for me, it was a, a, a blatant no like right away because I saw the product and how it was being delivered. And I think it was just being mismanaged. And <laughs> some of my and Corey's mutual friends um, who were Australian knew the, the founders really, really well. And they kept bugging me. They're like, Pete, we're opening a one in Santa Monica. We're gonna do one in Venice. We're gonna do one in West Hollywood. I would, we would love it if you came in and operated these studios for us. And at the time I was a gym owner down in San Diego, was across most of that space down there, very CrossFit oriented. And I was like, guys, it's just not me, it's just not for me. And that probably went on for about six months. And then they finally came to me and they're like, well, what are you doing now? And I'm just like, you know, they kept bugging me. And I was like, guys, not, not gonna happen. They're like, well, we want to introduce you to somebody. And it's like, we found a bigger, better looking and younger Pete. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> bullshit, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then he goes, no, we're gonna bring him down to San Diego. We're playing a gig down there. Uh, we would love for you to meet him. And lo and behold, I meet Corey George, right? And uh, look, he's the most, probably one of the most charismatic, like lovable humans um, you'll ever meet. He's a million miles a second, doesn't give really two craps, like who says what about him. He's just, but he's the most lovable character in the world, right? Yeah. Athletic as all hell, but he looks the part too. All the same. And I just immediately, I was like, I wanted to hate him so bad. And I was like, ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> I was just like, gosh, just be, just be an asshole, be a douchebag, give me something here, right? And he just wasn't. Yeah. And then they started sending me, he's like, hey, come do this with me, come do this with me. And I was like, all right, here's like the stipulations. Here's what I would love to see. Like we could do a lot of different things with this product, um, especially because it was an entry level for anybody and everybody that wanted to try group fitness. That's what I see the product as, right? It was just this opportunity for people who were terrified of doing group fitness, especially things like CrossFit, um, because everybody that I saw in an F45 space, I was like, this is who I want in my gyms. Mm -hmm. Like this is exact, the exact clientele. I can help all these people understand functional movement, understand like, you know, their capabilities, but they were getting that through F45 because I'm not saying it was watered down. It was just a more approachable brand. It was a more approachable like workout for a lot of people. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, like I care about these people just as much as I care about these CrossFit athletes and I want to give them the opportunity. So, you know, for us, we hit the ground running. And like, I think just kind of that shared chemistry that we had, we were speaking to every franchisee that came through the doors and helping them understand the product and the brand and how to deliver a great experience. Um, we started off doing these inductions with 20 to 30 kind of like, you know, brand new franchisees forever. And by the time we got into our stride, it might've been like six months into both of our operations, we had a hundred plus, mm. like we were packing our HQ with wow. like everybody that wanted to buy one of these things. And we're just like, holy crap, the numbers were just um, like insane. Yeah. You mentioned San Diego. Mm. Do you know uh, like Joe Kudla or Mike Persall, like some of the Viore guys? Yeah, so funny enough, dude, I, um, when I was down like in San- I wanted to hate those guys so bad. I, know, <laughs> <same thing>. <laughs> <laughs> I walked into their store in Encinitas, man, when they were a pop-up, literally oh a pop-up. Yeah. And uh, I was there with the girlfriend at the time and we walked in and I was like, oh, this kind of looks like Lulu or something like that. I was trying to get a vibe for it. And I was just like, hey, what are you guys selling? It's like, it's like athleisure for men. men. And I was just like, wait, what? Yeah, And my girlfriend's just like, this is so cool. This is so awesome. And they're like, well, where's your women's stuff? They're like, we don't have any yet. And she was so bummed, oh. right? And I put on like a pair of their pants and their shorts. And I was just like, oh my gosh. I was like, you guys are onto something here. It's like, yeah, but we're just, we're just focusing on the, the male you know, audience right now. And I was like, and I remember they were doing like, um, like trunk shows down in San Diego. Yeah, they were just yeah. trying to push it as best they can. Um, kind of like uh, yeah. rock climbing, mountain yeah. climbing stuff. And then- Exactly, yeah. exactly. But that's the thing, it's just like, I kind of saw them from that like your little shop in Encinitas. Yeah. 
and then they just freaking exploded. Dude, well, same, similar, I mean, a different but similar experience in the sense that like I had never heard of them before. I was doing a shoot with GQ and okay. uh, this- Good name friend, drop right there. Yeah, yeah right. I was doing a shoot <laughs> with GQ, no big deal. But no, I was working with a friend uh, who, who worked for GQ, um, Nicole uh, De La Rosa, and she was friends with them. And this whole shoot, they put on Viore on me and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. The hell is this? Never heard of it. I think it was their first shoot or at least definitely their first thing with GQ. Um, and I was just, I was like, I'm never not wearing this stuff again, man. Yeah. It, it was insane. Um, and we actually, we were with Joe uh, Kudla not too long ago. And he mentioned that. And he's like, he's like, hey, Brock, do you remember like when we first did that? And I'm like, yeah. what do you mean do I remember, dude? I haven't stopped wearing it since. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm probably one of your biggest supporters. Guys. Yeah, we did an episode with him. It was really interesting hearing, like it, almost like you said, right? Like starting small and then growing and growing and growing and like how they did that. And yeah. it's kind of cool. Dude, my funny story with Joe though too, because we got to meet up fairly early on in like his expansion and stuff like that. And I remember during COVID, I had a buddy of mine come to me. He's like, I want to do an apparel line, right? And I was like, okay, it's like, you know, I'll help you out through that. I don't know apparel. I know like, you know, of course, fitness and stuff like that. Maybe we can get in front of like a good, a good number of people. He goes, yeah, but I want to just focus on the mail. I was like, this sounds a lot like Viore, right? <laughs> so- Joe had taken care of me time and time again with a bunch of equipment and a bunch of, sorry, not equipment, uh, apparel and shorts and stuff. He'd always be sending me this stuff. And I actually did like some of their online things during COVID as a, as a pseudo trainer and stuff like that. And I remember walking in and he always gave me a 40% discount, which is like, thank you, Joe. Um, good guy. But I remember walking out and the receipt said Brave, B-R-A-V-E, right? In bold letters. And that was the name of my apparel brand. And I took a picture for this because I knew what he was doing. I took a picture to it and I sent it to him. He goes, that's the last one you get. Because oh, <laughs> what man. I was doing, I would shop his stuff because I loved it. And I was like, and I would send it off to my guys and be like, make this shirt, make these shorts, like give me something else. And so just Joe being Joe and just such a nice guy, he still gave me my discount, but he was like, that's the last one. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, they're, they're great guys, man. Yeah. And, and uh, what a brand that they, yeah. they've developed. But what I want to dive into is, you know, we talked about 45, we talked about Viore. I want to talk about FitStop. What mm -hmm. is FitStop and how is it different uh, to other, you know, companies yeah. in the group fitness space? Yeah. I mean, there's layers to all of this. I mean, for, I think for the most kind of well-rounded understanding, it's accessible strength training. Mm. Uh, when I mean accessible, it's for anybody and everybody, right? Uh, what the team has really kind of capitalized on is this, uh, I think this level of information and knowledge when it comes to the importance of strength training, especially as we age um, and as we get older for, you know, not only stronger bodies, but bone density, you know, stronger limbs and stuff like that. And that requires load, right? And when I say load, it requires like tangible load, something that people are comfortable with and they feel, you know, at least like through some levels of assistance, I can do this, mm. right? And I think, you know, so many times people see, you know, bodybuilding and CrossFit, and they're just like, I can't do those things. Like, why would you expect me to ever do? Like, I'll never get to that place, yeah. right? And so when I say accessible, it's something that's digestible and people feel like I can jump into this and make this happen, right? Yeah. Um, I also think that a lot of people in a group fitness atmosphere, they're looking probably for something that is a little bit more strength-based. Um, hence why I think this is a, a huge opportunity for us in this market where people you know, they've done their hits, um, they've done their, you know, their running or their cycling or whatever it might be from a group fitness um, understanding. And they're just like, hey, it's like, I see enough people on Instagram. I see enough people on YouTube. I have plenty of coaches, credible coaches, doctors saying I need more strength training, you know, in my protocol. Yeah. And I think that's what we provide, right? Um, what I fell in love with, you know, from sports till now is that interaction in that group training atmosphere, um, similar to what we did yesterday. Yeah. Just hanging with the boys, right? And moving weight and having some fun. Flexing, you know, yeah. puffing out our chest. Exactly. You know? uh, the way that we kind of uh, structure our workouts is within that team dynamic. You're either working in teams of two, teams of three, teams of six. So it's forced engagement. You have to interact with the people that you're working out with. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that's for everybody, right? Um, but it brought me right back to like college sports, right? Where I'm just like, oh, this makes sense because we're sharing back squats, we're, we're stripping weights, we're putting weight on, we're spotting each other. And that's what we ask from our clientele um, is, is naturally that interaction, right? Talking through a workout, not just being in the same space and moving in the same space, but naturally being like, oh, okay, I have to work with this person, maybe spot this person, maybe help them, talk to them through the entire thing. Um, and we're also rep-based. It's not work against the clock. 
right? I don't like junk volume. I don't like junk, junk reps, mm. right? So the intention is always clear when it comes to our strength protocol. We give you set reps for each and every, each and every station. We make sure that you're kind of moving in that prioritized way. We're loading correctly. We're resting. We're not working against the clock. I think we're doing a lot of re-educating right now for people that are coming into our studios because they're just like, oh shoot, only I got seven minutes or I got 30 seconds here. Yeah. I really got to get as many reps as I can. It's like, no, 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 slow down, prescribe the load, right? Understand the movement, take the rests and then perform, right? And I, that's what we're doing from a, a programming standpoint. But don't get me wrong, it's not strictly S and C because that can get boring as all hell, especially for the masses. Um, you know, we do work in a progressive overload. We're a 12 week program built out solely off of strength, but we build in your Met comps, we build in your aerobic capacities, mm -hmm. we build all those like the fun things to have where you're breathing heavy and you're sweating all over the dang place. But it's all kind of, it's mastered and put together in a way that is, you know, digestible for a five week or six day period. Sorry, not a five day or six day period. But we ask all of our, all of our clients to show up just for three. It's like, if I can get you for three days out of the week, I'm happy, yeah. right? It doesn't have to be anything chaotic because I want you to move more to live more. And it's like, if you're constantly living in the gym, similar to myself, right, for, for so many years, you know, the gym for me is my happy place, but now applying the fitness, doing a rug club, playing volleyball, playing paddle tennis, whatever it might be, go apply it, right? There's no need to be stuck inside four walls and constantly just crushing your soul over and over again. And that's the intention. I love the that. Yeah. The application. Because that's yeah. my favorite part, man. Yeah. You go to the beach when you're looking good and, you know. Right. Feels better. Exactly. And that's, and that's the beauty of it all. It's like, you know, uh, aesthetics is always a byproduct of whatever you're doing. Totally. Right? Totally. And I think people are always fighting for the aesthetics. Like, how do I lose this amount of weight? Or how do I look this way? And stuff like that. It's just like, look, just give consistency to a program and you're going to get there. Right. Um, and you'll have that nice byproduct, right? You'll feel more confident, mental clarity, sleep patterns, all those things that are so important to life and just like being f fulfilled throughout life. It's just naturally you have to give consistency to that program. Yeah. Well said. Yeah, there's the there's the consistency, there's discipline, there's just showing up and and you know, you're saying your quality of life is gonna go through the roof. Cause that's one thing I try to explain to people is so many times people get in their head and they're like, okay, I'm not going to look like that guy or this. Well, well, that guy took 20 years of his life to get to that point, you know? And mm -hmm. it takes time to get out of shape. It takes time to get into shape. And we all have different fat, like levels, right? Like you probably are not going to go run a hundred mile marathon. Right. You know, if you want to compare it to other people, like I know I'm not, I'm not going to run a, <laughs> that's like a, a half long marathon. marathon. <laughs> but that's my point though. Yeah. So, but but if someone goes into your lane and you're performing at your peak, you know, you're, you're one of the top performers in the world, right? So- if you look at it that way, it's like, what are your goals? What's your intention? Do you want to be healthy? Do you want to have the you know aesthetic physique? There's different styles of training that do all that. But if you want the quality of life and you want to be healthy, this sounds like something that is just going to be all out, all around good. Yeah, yeah, and you're correct. I mean, look, when it comes to standardized group programming, I know a lot of like coaches and trainers gawk at that kind of thing. It's just like, hey, it can't be a one size fit all, which I totally understand, right? Um, if somebody wants to get specialized in a certain thing or they want certain things like, you know, it's like, hey, I want to lose, you know, weight here. or I'm looking to develop, you know, you know, my shoulders a little bit more and stuff like that. You're probably going to go to a coach, right? And get those things done, right? But if you just want to feel better and move better and live better, it's like, I'm going to provide that for you. You know, I'm going to give you that through a program. And guess what? You're going to socialize a little bit. You're going to be a part of a community. And I get it. It's like for a lot of people, that's not it. But for the people that we appeal to, they love it. They really do. Yeah. 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 And yeah. The, the drive towards community, sorry, but the, the drive towards community is such a big piece for us. And so outside of just sweating in the same space, you are talking to people, you are interacting with people. And so every time I see somebody that's brand new, they're like, look, that was awesome. You know, I'll, I'd be happy to come back for another week, but I just made two new friends today. Like I, like I literally got their numbers. It's like, we're going to hang out. It's like, that's what I really appreciate after, after like a good group fitness class. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what it should be all about. You know, it's it's you're over here, you're you're all working towards a similar goal of bettering yourself, right? So it's you're already gonna find people that are like minded. It's already difficult to get in there and do that, but when you make it more attainable, uh, it's more enjoyable. And then you wanna keep coming back and then you keep on doing it. Because if you go into a gym, that's why you know, there's been that stipulation of of women being on the the weight room floor. Uh, and not doing that to a degree, not as many, right? Mm. Uh, because they're afraid of the weights or being around all these big men all the time. It's it's a very unapproachable space at yeah. times, right? But but giving it, uh, making people feel comfortable there, and also I I found too, like I'm one, like yes, I'm I'm self driven and and I love to you know get the results and I know what I'm looking for. I've studied this for years and I, and I know what I want to achieve aesthetically, physically, cardiovascularly, like all, of, all mm. aerobically, you know, but. 
it's not that for everybody. And when you can break it down to, okay, it's, I'll say this to myself, even though I do this and I'm being self-driven most of the time, it is nice to be guided through something, to not have to think about it anymore. When you train with your buddies, I'm like, yo, we're doing your training today. Let's go. Even if it's just you and your buddy, like we did yesterday. I yeah. was like, I just ran with you guys and it was great. You know, I might've outperformed a few times, you know, but it still gets out. <laughs> no, yeah, shut up an hour late. That's okay. No. I think that's a really good point too, is like, the, oh, thanks is, for throwing that in there, by the way. <laughs> everyone is so different, right? And like right now I'm at the point, I mean, shit, dude, I've, I had back surgery a couple of years ago, like after I was training super, super hard with a trainer one-on-one. And right now I'm just doing like three to four days a week, light free weights, bunch of cardio, you know, pull downs, if every type of free weight you can imagine. And I'm like just getting back into it, but I'm also eating really well and have been for the last like six months. Right. I'm, my watch, it like doesn't even fit anymore. I'm like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's good. It's like falling wow. off, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I've been eating really good and I've been doing like a light version of working out. Yeah. And that right now is what I need. And then once I kind of build up back a little more strength, I'll go back to Equinox, see like a group thing in, you know, maybe try something like Fit Stop. Like I just kind of like building back up to like that strength level where I'm a little more comfortable going in like a public arena yeah. for it. If that no, makes sense. That's a great point. And honestly, I think, you know, we get caught up so much in the performance aspect when we step into group fitness that we're like, I got to keep up with these people. Oh, they look so much more fit than I am. Like, what am I doing here? Am I, it's like, am I, should I even be here? It's terrifying. It's terrifying to so many people when they step in there for the first time, especially for like the first week. Yeah. And they're like, I'm just not fit enough for that yet. It's like, that's the reality of what I'm trying to do for you though, is I'm trying to make sure that we, I'm gonna guide you in the right way. I'm gonna give you the right instructions. I'm gonna give you the right program. We're gonna give you the right sets and the right reps to get to that place where you can be fit enough to do whatever the hell you want, yep. right? Um, I think that's like, I, I hear it all the dang time. It's like, I'm just not fit enough for that yet. That's fine. Honestly, if you want to find a little bit more confidence, a little bit more control, a more I get it. I, I totally it. understand, yeah. yeah. Because it happens. It happens all the dang time. But naturally, that's the intention of the program, right? yep. is to help you get there. It's just getting over those hurdles and those ebbs and flows. And I mean, to Brock's point, exactly. Um, you just have to show up. The yep. toughest part is literally getting your ass up out of bed and getting to the studio. If you get there, you got an hour of like guided instruction. You're going to get your butt handed to you in yeah. the best way possible. And it's like, and, and that's it. You walk out and you're like, okay, that's the, great. The hardest oh, yeah. part I've, I've found, at least for me, has been the showing up part. Yeah. Because when you get there and you get in it and you start moving, you know, blood starts flowing, you start pushing some weight around, you start running, doing whatever it is. You're, you, I've never found a time that I've regretted going. You know, I'm like, I just did. One, I made myself one more, even that was the thing. When I had no money mm. uh, and I, I was living at home with my mom, I was like 18, you know, 19, trying to figure, find my way. I just moved back home. Um, the one thing that I had, if I didn't do anything else positive was at least I did a workout and I did one step closer to my goals and my dreams, yeah. whatever it is. And then it things started happening eventually, but it was that consistency at least. And the one thing that I could control, which was my physicality was my health. Um, and it helped me get to, you know, this seat today where we're sitting and, yeah. and hopefully wherever we're going to go from here. But I've never found a negative in it, man. There's yeah. never been a negative in taking care of yourself and, you know, working out and training and, and staying healthy. There's Isn't never been a negative. It's the beauty of exercise. Like I, we, uh, I, we just had our grand opening here in Santa Monica um, this past weekend and we haven't slept my entire team in probably eight days, right? Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, they've been grinding with us. It's been phenomenal, great response from the community. And literally our first week in operations, it's just been jam packed, right? And we just had like our first like weekly meeting on Friday and I could just see it in all my trainers and my operators, they're just beat to hell, right? <laughs> and they, and I was just like, hey, when's the last time we've all worked out? Like, and they're like, well, you know, we haven't really had an opportunity. I was like, let's drop everything right now. 45 minutes of movement. Let's just get through this workout, right? And I could just see him just go, oh, it's the last thing we want to do, Pete. Yeah. Like, I don't want to move. I don't want to sweat. Let's just get through this goddamn meeting and get the hell back to work. I'm like, nope, we're going to move. We're going to sweat. Just suffer with me. I'm, I'm pissed off as well. Let's go. And as soon as that blood starts kicking, yeah. going through the motions, like all their attitudes, the personalities yeah. just, I just came to life again. 
And you know, now we can have a pretty great meeting and like actually enjoy each other's company again. Where before it's just like, I just saw it in their faces. They didn't want to be there, right? Yeah. And that's the beauty of exercise, right? It's just like you release all those endorphins, the, like the exactly. chemicals that just naturally punch you in the face once you get moving. It's the beauty of it, right? And yeah. I think it's like, everybody says it's my therapy, but in all, all reality, it's like, it's their happy place, right? I know it's tough work. It's not easy work, but naturally, as soon as you get through that, you're such, you're in such yeah. a greater mood. Every, every time. single time. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah. And that was for me growing up too, is, is I found working out when I was about 15. I fell in love with it because I was a skinny kid. I was very insecure. I was made fun of all the time. And, and when I finally figured it out and started getting results, my perspective, my view of myself, my confidence in myself mm -hmm. changed, but also I grew up with really heavy depression. And I found that the only time I was happy was when I, when I had absolutely murdered myself in the gym. And I walk out and I'm like, I have at least a couple hours of just bliss. You know, yeah. I, I have given everything I have, and I've made myself better in some way. And those endorphins are pumping. And it was mm. before, you know, we had this much access as we do now, and it's just growing consistently, right, with the internet and AI and all this other stuff. But it was something that I was like, I don't know the science behind this, but I can tell you uh, instinctively, I feel amazing and I can feel whatever's going on here. My mental clarity, I had better focus. I was happy, you know, whatever it was, I became addicted to that. Mm. And it helped get me out of this funk I was in for so many years of my life. Um, and, it, and like I said, it, I've only found a positive. When you really break down all the good stuff that comes out of taking care of yourself and getting fit and getting in shape, they're all positives. You can't you can't find a negative, I don't think. No. If if that guiding light isn't like a physical representation of God, I don't know what is, you know what I mean? Like yeah. honestly, like to for you to follow that feeling and like continue doing that. Yeah. And to, you know, it's it's pretty powerful. Yeah. It it's funny because, you know, I think when you find the weight room when you're really young as a young male, especially um, there's so much power in that. You don't realize it too at the same time. It's a way to get out your aggressions. It's a way to just dump those hormones. Yeah. Um, it's probably why you're such a nice guy now, right? <laughs> I mean- <laughs> Thousands of hours right? in the gym, guys. <laughs> I, it humbles you in a hundred times over. Yeah, you yeah. know, I think I was one of those kids that just, you know, I, I don't get me wrong. I was, I came from a single family or sing, single parent kind of like family, four kids, forced a lot. I was the eldest of four kids. Mm. And, you know, the kids that I grew up with in my neighborhood, we played sports, but we got in a lot of fights, right? I think that's just being a kid, yeah. you know, being a young male too at the same time. And I had so much aggression, right, constantly. And I was just like, where the hell is this coming from? It's just like, no matter what we were doing, you just wanted to punch the kid in the face, whatever yeah. it was, right? <laughs> and I think that's all young men, right? You know, we're yeah. dealing with stuff we like, you know, you go through puberty, you're yeah. just trying to figure it out. You right? got these new hormones coming in, you don't know what to deal with them. Yeah, like, yeah. and then I, I ran into the weight room. I went, my mom bought me my first like, Basically, it was a plastic set and this terrible yeah. barbell. And vinyl she goes, weights yes, and everything. Yeah. yeah. And she goes, figure out what to do here. And I probably bench pressed for like a week straight, right? Yeah. That's all I did. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't realize the benefits. It was like literally taking out all this aggression, right? Yep. On these weights versus, you know, ending up in juvie or, or in prison. So yeah. I was just like, if I can stress something to like young kids, especially young men, it's just like find the weight room young. It's going to make yeah. a world of difference for you in so many ways. I yeah. couldn't agree more with that. Yeah, speaking of those like vinyl, you know, plastic weight sets too. Like I, I had one in a, when I was about 15 is really like when I started getting working out. And so the only place I had to work out was weight training at school. Didn't have a gym membership or anything. So I bought a set for the house, which is like, oh, it was like a hundred bucks or something, something yeah. cheap. But you had to screw the barbell together. <laughs> and I remember I got to the point um, when I first bench pressed ever, I had 95 pounds fall on my chest. Mm. I was 135 pounds at 6'3". I was a bean pole dude. I, could, I had no strength whatsoever. I don't even know how much I could have, maybe 75 if I was lucky. Um, but I remember that first getting made fun of for that. And then two, the feeling of just feeling weak, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, by the time, probably like six months into having this set, it might have gone up to 150 pounds. I don't know, but the bar was bending, dude. I'm yep. like, this thing's gonna snap any rep. But it, but I would let the thing fall on me, you know, it didn't have to figure it out. And I never had the spotter. So what it taught me was to, uh, just muscle control, mind muscle control, the connection I have and what I'm capable of. So I would conserve my energy for that last rep, fire, up. and I would get it out so that the weight let never fell fall. on me again. Yeah, fire you know, up. and. I'm not gonna say I haven't had it happen a couple of times, but I, but I know myself and I know what my limits are and how to overcome that. And that's, yeah, that was one of the coolest things was it taught me, you know, 
you learn to go to failure, right? But you grow from failure. Mm. You learn from those mm. failures and they become your successes. And I taught myself like, first time I ever benched 500 pounds. All right, I was like 20, I think. And I've been- a solid number right there. I was about okay. to say 225. <laughs> like, that was right. my running But back. still chasing that but, number, but okay. <laughs> no, no, don't do it, trust me. I got a couple of injuries out of that bad boy. But my whole thing was that I'd been training and training and training until I can get to this point because so many people have these mental blocks on these big numbers, right? Every time I lifted, I, I had a certain thing I would do, a, like a flex, I would test the weight I would do. I have like a, you know, I, uh, I don't know what the term would be, but I did the same thing to condition myself for that moment. And then it got to the point where I put 500 pounds on, on the weight and I had like three spotters around me and everyone's freaking out. They think I'm gonna drop it. They don't know what's gonna happen, right? And I had been training for months for this. I'm like so ready, dude, because I'd already broken all these barriers and I'd been repping some big stuff. Anyways, I pick up the weight and I'm like, all right, this thing's heavy, you know, it is heavy. But I would always tell myself, I can do more, I can do more, I can do more. And I repped it out one rep and it was, I was like, that was pretty light and everyone's freaking out. So I did two more, dude. <laughs> <laughs> for three. And everyone's sitting there like, what the hell? Like, who the hell is this guy? I'm 20 years old, man. Uh, and it only went up from there, but but it was one of those things in my head. It was the story I tell myself right here. And I saw this video not too long ago of this kid, total beanpole dude, and he put fake weights on the on the bench, right? And he's benching 500 pounds and having this random kid in the in the gym spot him, and the kid's blown away. He's like, "Wow, did you do that? What's going on?" So they're fake weights, Wait, yeah. And the kids sit, the other kid sits down. He's what? like, "I think you can do it." He sits down to bench it, and he couldn't bench it, dude. It probably weighed 60 pounds or something, you know? Oh. And so I was just, my only thought was like, the it's our minds is yeah. the biggest factor, I think, with, when it comes to what we believe we're capable of. And when you start to believe you're capable of more things and you realize our bodies are more resilient and, and more capable of things, you push through these barriers. And it's like, your mind's gonna give out before your body does. And if you can get through that and realize, look, I can do one more rep, I can do five more reps, I can do 30 more seconds of cardio. I, even when I do cardio, I have a set limit I always wanna hit, let's say it's a 25 minutes and I'm trying to hit X amount of calories, X amount of you know whatever it is, distance, all that. I always do one more minute. If I have a rep count that I'm trying to hit, I'll find a way to do another rep. Yeah. Like I just push through and, and, and it's something that helps me better myself, but also at the same time, it reminds me to not be okay with just, the bare minimum or or what it should be. I want to excel and go further. And I, I feel like I try to apply that to the rest of my life as well. Pain but, and gain, maybe. But yeah, yeah. man, it's, well, it's- Stressing that, I mean, you're talking about when you were 20 years old, right? Bench yeah. pressing 500, okay. Um, look, <laughs> <laughs> that's freakish stuff, right? Um, and don't get me wrong, incredible genetics too. All right, you're leaning on those at the same. But at a very young age, you're figuring out that mind-muscle connection, yeah. right? You're figuring out, okay, what can I push to and how hard can I push, yeah. right? What is my body capable of? If you were, let's subtract three years and you're just literally just dropping a barbell on your chest, you're not gonna load it up with 500 pounds and hope for the no. best, right? Um, that's the beauty of learning that at such a young age and why I think it's so important for like, especially, you know, as you age, you naturally, it's gonna get tougher and it's gonna get a little bit harder every single year that you put off the gym, right? It's so much easier for us now because we, yes, we started at a very young age to understand how hard we can push, where we can push and understanding our body, right? Yep. How we recover, how long it takes us. Um, Dude, I'm so in tune with that right now. Yeah. Like, and I'm gaining so much, so many pounds each week just based off light workouts. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, and- <laughs> everybody wants it now, right? Give it to me now, give it to me now. And that, right. the harsh reality is like, you've been in the gym for like, you know, close to 15 freaking years. Yeah, it's like 16, a long damn yeah. time. Yeah. And that takes time just like anything else, right? And people are just so impatient. They want to get, they want to see the results. They'll go and they end up like either injuring themselves or or checking out or saying this is too hard. I can't do this. It's just like, just give it the time and the effort every single day. The small incremental gains are going to make a world of def difference. You're creating adaptation just through that, uh, through that time. But back to kind of like, you know, being young and, and pushing through those barriers, right? And understanding those things. It's just like, now I got people that don't understand how to push or where to push or when to push, Yeah. right? And I'll have clients and it's like, as much as I love things like this, right? The, the wearables, where it's just like, they're tracking their heart rate. They're seeing how like, how many calories they're pushing and stuff like that. I remember one of my clients, I'm having him do sprints with me. And he's like, he's, he's, he's moving, right? We get to maybe like two or three of these things and he's breathing heavy and he's looking down at his watch. I'm like, okay. I was like, is he checking his emails? What's going on? And 
he grabs me after like the fourth one. He goes, Pete, my heart rate is jacked. And I was like, okay. And then he's like, he's like, I was like, well, talk to me. And he's like, I was like, how are you feeling? Are you feeling lightheaded? He goes, no, no. It's like, like my, my watch is telling me my heart rate is just like through the roof right now. I got to slow this down. Give me a little bit more time. And I'm like, you're putting together complete sentences right now. At this point yeah. in time, you should be slurring words. You should be struggling to just get words out, if not just sounds, right? The way that I want to push, right? Don't let that watch dictate exactly. how hard you're moving or how hard you're capable of moving, right? And it goes back to the mental. It's exactly. just like understanding like where we're at and then relying on things like a wearable to be like, oh no, slow down, pump the brakes, yeah. right? It, that's, that's where I'm just like- That's <laughs> also, you know, I think especially in the fitness industry, we're fed so much different information. And when you mm-hmm. listen to like, oh, you shouldn't have your heart rate over, you know, 175 or whatever the hell it is. Right. You know? um, people get that in their head and then that's their barrier. And, and not realizing there's gonna be some science that comes out five years from now that says, oh, you can actually do you know, X, Y, Z for a limited amount of time and it actually benefits you with this. Like it's, there's, there's just no limitation. Like we don't, the fraction that we understand in the human body is so minuscule with mm-hmm. all of the science. Like we have neurosurgeons that operate on the brain. We have, you know, it's just the, it, the vastness of it is incredible, but to understand what our bodies are capable, it would be impossible. Yeah. But how do we get to those points is by pushing the limitations, pushing the boundaries, pushing ourselves to levels we didn't know were possible. And exactly what you're saying, there's those narratives that we tell and then we involve technology, which is a major benefit in a lot of ways. And it's helped people. Yeah. And I think it's going to continue to help people. But then there's the negatives of it, of, of what is that thing that's holding you back? Why are you stopping because of this thing? What if that thing was malfunctioning? Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and you didn't know it, you know, or, or you know, they needed a Apple Watch update and it didn't update the right thing and it's calculating it in a completely wrong way, you know? Yeah. Dude, I'm super down with this combo, honestly. It's fucking awesome. And like one of the things, so like we talk a lot about physical growth, right? But you've also touched on both of you, the mental aspect of it. And like my whole thing is Eckhart Tolle, Tolle, we call, call him fucking everything. I can't, I don't know what the last name is. We're gonna have to get him on and ask him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love that. He's like my hero. But his whole thing is like, humans are at a point in evolution where our next evolution will be one of the brain. It'll be a conscious evolution, not really of the brain, of consciousness and awareness. And like we can either evolve past all our shitty habits of fast food and you know all the bad things in the world, or we'll destroy ourselves with the thousands of nuclear weapons we have all over the earth. Yeah. So like, it's one of two ways. Which way is it going to be? Are we going to evolve consciously or sabotage ourselves? And I think this is like a huge part of it because I think physical growth is a window into spiritual growth and spiritual growth is a window window into physical, right? Like they're both interchangeable. And I like, and both like you both touched on the mental and physical. So I fucking love this conversation, but I just wanted to say that because I think it's super important. It's like, we're talking about the future of the human race and it's the first time ever a species on this planet has had a choice in their evolution, a fucking choice. And like, you can either go grind out the gym and like meditate and grow spiritually or we'll fuck each other up, (laughs) you know? But that's my spiel. That's the thing. It's just like, you know, uh, for, for most of these guys, and you know, you look at like certain leaders and I, it's like, I'm not gonna get political with any of this stuff, but I'm just like, just put that guy. It's like, you look at Pete, like somebody like Putin. It's like, I get it. He loves his, uh, is he a jujitsu guy? I, I don't know. Oh, is he? I think he might be. Yeah. But I'm just like, I know he's a very guy, physical guy. Yeah, put that guy through like a gnarly, like strength protocol. He might be, you know, I'm just like, maybe he might pump the brakes just a little bit on going chaos on everybody. He's a hockey guy. Like give him a different yeah. outlet. Like you're saying give yeah. him a different outlet. Give him a different outlet yeah. to put that, that energy somewhere else. I mean, look, it's like we're coming up with every opportunity to, you know, avoid hard work, um, avoid pressure, avoid um, discomfort. Um, where the harsh reality is like, show me a better drug than working out. Show me a better drug than exercising. It's next to impossible, right? All the statins that are out there, all the antidepressants. It's like, get somebody consistently working out with you and you'll watch those things just dissipate and disappear from their lives. That's what I love about like exercise. That's why I fell in love with it too at the same time. It's like, I think we all deal with our own demons, especially kind of like part of that nurturing process growing up. 
And that was the thing. I just love being physical, right? I was just, I love sports. Yeah. I love movement. I love sweating. I love being on the basketball court since my, ha my hands were the same color as the asphalt, bleeding, just dumping sweat. I grew up in Vegas. So it's just like, it was always hot. Um, but I, 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 that was like my, my go-to when anything was really going nasty in like my life, I was just like, just go move, go dribble a basketball for God knows how long, go push a car up the driveway, you know, go try to kill yourself with a bench press or something like that. But that, that was my outlets for so many people. And it's just like, Sometimes it's like, it's that drug that gets, gets lost in transit or it gets lost in translation because it is challenging. It's not just popping a pill. It's not just sitting back and letting it do its thing. Um, you have to put in the work in order to kind of get those, those benefits, which is yeah. always like the challenging part. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree with that more. And, and just because of the benefits that I felt I've reaped from being physical. Right. And um, I, I found that, you know, over time you get a lot of injuries from training and, and not training correctly, not listening to your body as, as you should, or doing the stuff like, uh, the recovery movements and, you know, the stretching and everything that you, we, we don't do as often <laughs> as we should. Um, but what I found is, is when I had this really bad injury, uh, combination, I guess you could say is multiple herniations in my neck and a uh, torn meniscus in my knee. And I let, you know, all of these doctors, chiropractors, everybody tell me, don't move, let it heal, do this, do that. You know? And so I ended up getting a very sedentary lifestyle. I was eating bad more often. I was feeling horrible about myself. I wasn't going to the gym, staying physical. When it's funny, when you really break it down, is like, my uncle said this to me. He said, he's like, what happens when you stop moving? Well, I, I, I didn't really know the answer to that. Like, I'm like, what do you, is this a trick question? He's like, no, when you stop moving, you're dead. Yeah. If you have the ability to exercise, even if it's just going on a walk, if you have the ability to, you, you know, do a pull up, if you have the ability to go swim 10 miles or 10 feet, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Use that, mm. have that and, and exercise that because when you stop doing all of that, you begin to die, you, you're dying, you know, and, and then you eventually die. And, and what I found is those injuries got worse. How did I get out of those injuries? By doing physical therapy, yeah. by training my core more, by you know studying the the stuff that I needed to do and applying it as well, and and I built my way out of it. And now, you know, I, I went and saw one of those guys not too long ago at, in one of the gyms I was at, and he was like, "What happened to you?" And I'm like, "I started exercising the thing you told me not to do, <laughs> and I feel amazing." Um, and of course, I did it, you know, strategically and and as well as I could have done and with some help of doctors here and there, you know, but, but it's the thing is like, if you listen to somebody else and you don't actually stay active, you're, you're hurting yourself more than you're helping yourself. And the rest of my body, my whole point of me saying all that was the rest of my body started falling apart more. Yeah. And then my mental followed, you yeah. know, and it was just not a place that I ever want to get back to or be in. I would willing to push myself, not necessarily through the, I guess I'll push through the pain, but in a, in a healthy way, not like, my neck hurts, let me go try and do some crazy neck movement. It's gonna mess it up more, you know, it's it's no, push through the pain of doing those other exercises that I didn't wanna do that are gonna support that, you know, yeah. uh, and finding the healthy treatments to help me get to that point too. But the whole point of me saying that is, regardless of your limitations or whichever you believe they are, you can still move, you can still breathe, find a way to move and stay healthy. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, it's great, honestly, and I completely agree with, the movement being like you're living, right? It's it's life. Movement is life, and you know we always have these metrics that come out every year. That's like the qual or sorry the uh, the le the length of life for most humans, especially like in the U.S. You know they always do like these polar things where it's just like you see, oh, we're living longer, we're living longer. But really, are we like what's the quality of life, right? What's the anticipation after you hit 60? Is it sedentary? Is it just like, hey, it's like I'm a vegetable hanging out and just watching the tube every damn day? Like what what is that? What does that life look like? Because I'll tell you right now, at the age of 60, if I'm not moving around, if I'm not like being able to, you know, walk down the beach or run run with like hopefully a potential grandkid or kid in the in the near future, right? Um, just one of those things that is just like so important to actually feeling like you're living, like when does that check out and you go, oh, okay, now I'm just going to hang tight until like the heart stops ticking, right? Yeah. It's just like, I think that is so important when it comes to just purely exercising, making sure those benefits are always there. I was talking to my class the other day and they, and they just hated the fact that we were doing cleans, like power cleans with a barbell or yeah. dumbbells, whatever it might be, because it's a very challenging, it's a very technical movement, Yeah. right? And you need proper education, you need proper coaching, and you need a plenty of time. It's like a golf swing, right? You need a lot, a lot of time and attention to it. 
Um, and a lot of people for the first time, they were just doing it with the barbell and they're just trying to figure it out. They're like, Pete, like, I just, I don't get it. Why do we do these things? And I'm just like, the first thing that goes as you age, it's not your mobility, it's not your endurance, it's not your strength, it's your power, right? And if you lose that ability just to pick up and go and run and be explosive and stuff like that, that's the first thing that's gonna disappear. And then the things, the, the, the strength, the, uh, the ability to move in space, the ability just to, to, to kind of catch yourself when you're falling, like all those things will dissipate fairly fast if power is not at that, that, that the foremost. So that's the reason why I'm getting you to move explosively with a, with a weight and with a load, right? Yeah. Why I want you to be able to jump, right? Those things are so critical as you age. And if you're not doing them on a regular basis, you're not gonna have them as you get older, right? And then that's the thing, it's just like going back to like, hey, why does grip strength so important, right? When you get older, right? And that's like one of the huge markers of like a long life is grip strength. It's like, hey, if you have a very good grip strength, you're, you're, you're expected to live longer. The reality of that is just like, what does that mean? It's like-, like Blood flow or like- oh, Yeah, that, and everybody's just like, what is it? It's like, if you're gonna fall down and yeah. break your hip yep. and you're not able to grab onto something and hold your body weight, that's your grip strength, right? And that you bust that hip, guess what? You're toast. Yeah. That's literally, this is like, and quintessentially, there's a lot of things. If you have strong grip, you're a strong human, right? You're able to either probably dead hang with your body weight. You're able to pick something up that's heavy. Um, it, and that it all correlates to having grip strength, right? right? But if you're going to fall, and, and that's how most people end up, you know, dying or, or, or literally ending up in the hospital is they, you know, they break a hip or they, they break their back just because they weren't able to hold their weight up. That's why we got those like life alert buttons, right? Yeah. So you fall and you can't get up and then you're stuck there for days in the end, uh, days on end and yeah. it's the end of the time. But that's like also too with strength training, you know, they talk about bone density and, and just your health overall. And it, it, you're, that's one thing I noticed when I was super skinny, I grew up skateboarding and I would fall. I broke, I can't tell you how many bones I broke, dude. Once I put on some muscle, I did the same exact fall on this quarter pipe. It was like a five foot fall straight onto my shoulder. I did it maybe two years apart from each other. I remember I had shoulder muscles at that time. I fell on it, didn't feel it. And I was like, that's what that feels like? <laughs> Wait, what? It, did, it made me love working out even more, you know, yeah. because I had a shell now that was protecting me. Right. Instead of me falling straight bone to ground, I was, there we go. <laughs> break, I'm gonna break someone right now. Break this table. But um, I, I ended up being protected by my muscle, and then my my bones are stronger, my mm. tendons and ligaments are stronger. You know, and and my health overall is exactly it's your your mortality rate is goes up through the roof. Dude, I could like snowboard longer with my family if my cardio is good, right? I can like shred better. I get more speed if I have more mass, like all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. it all all plays into the quality of life and exactly what you're saying. You know, I don't want to be sitting in a chair. Uh, when I'm 60 for the rest of my life, I want to be able to play and pick up the kids, you know, uh, the grandkids and um, just live life. Yeah. I'd rather have 70 amazing years than a hundred shitty ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. So true. It's so true. And this thing, it's like, look, at the end of the day, we, I, 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 I'm a gym rat. I've always been a gym rat. I love the gym. You I dirty love rat. <laughs> uh, movement in general, right? I don't care what you're doing. As long as you're moving for a half an hour out of the day, I don't give a crap. You're getting your heart rate up. You're doing something like that makes me so much more happier than just being like, oh, it's like, well, what do you think about this modality? And what about this modality? Or you just, you know, you just love moving weight. It's like, yes, that's what I'd love to do. And I know what it from just science-based evidence that's going to tell me it's going to help me live a little bit longer probably. But if you're moving a move on a daily basis, hats off to you. Right? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be fit stop. It doesn't have to be F45. It doesn't have to be CrossFit. Do something you enjoy and love doing. Just keep fucking doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the great part of being human too, is that look at how many people have successes in different ways and enjoy things differently. That's why we have this massive, you know, culture of different people that are like, we wouldn't have, you know, these incredible rock climbers or long distance runners or, you know, triathletes and doing all these people are exploring different ways to be fit. And they're doing things that I'm not going to go do, you know, but, but it's amazing yeah. it, to go see and to witness. And it helps us think more outside the box of what's possible, but it's people enjoying their bodies the way that they were intended to, you know, yeah. in the ways that they enjoy doing it. And that's my hat will be tipped off to that all day, you know? No. And, the, and it's one of those things. It's like, um, we put such a, an emphasis, you know, it's, I, you know, it's more, I think it's overseas than it is here in the U S because we put do, we do put a huge emphasis on athleticism sports. I mean, it's such a huge industry in itself. Um, but I spent roughly two years in, in, uh, the UK 
And over there, there's just such more uh, a, a love for the arts, a love for you know uh, a level of intelligence and articulation outside of just sports and wellness and fitness. Um, and it's like it's getting into the fold of understanding of like how critical it is for your health, which is beautiful. And I love seeing those things. But when I see somebody's like at a very young age that has the physical intelligence to move in space and just be an athlete, I always I always want to credit that because that is a level of an intelligence that not everybody has. Yeah. Right. But then when you look at a genius like that can solve a math problem and do X, Y, Z, you know, and retain, regurgitate, retain, regurgitate. It's like, yeah, it's like absolutely they have a very special talent when it comes to like what we consider intelligence, right? But watching, you know, a young kid spin off of his like back foot and do like a kick flip and just like something like you don't expect from most kids, you're like, wow, like we don't we don't honor that as intelligence, but it yeah. is. It yeah. is because they they take that talent, they progress that thing, and it's just like and not everybody has that, right? And yeah. so, you know, for us, like being former athletes, it's like we get to take advantage of that special kind of like physical intelligence and then apply it to the weight room or apply it to whatever sport we're doing. But we also have to learn, like this is what I learned fairly young as like, as like a, a young coach. I was like, oh, they don't move like I move or they're not capable yet of being able to move like I move. Like this is gonna take some time. Right. And not, but not everybody's as gifted. So you got to make sure that you can give the time and the efforts to those people that are still trying to figure it out. They don't have the mind muscle connection. They don't have the wherewithal or the body awareness. So it's just like, I always go back to being a kid and like, especially young kids, it's like get into some kind of gymnastics class, play a sport, figure out what the weight room is. It's like, it's going to be so much more beneficial as you age to know those things at a young age. Yeah. hundred percent. You talk a lot about like that physical intelligence. Like I would bet a lot of money that even like Elon Musk, who's not in the best shape, he's never gonna look like you guys, but like, I guarantee he does 30 minutes on the bike every day or something, right? Cause he's intelligent enough to understand if he wants to live longer, he needs some cardio, he needs to move. You know what I mean? And I, I, I would bet, I would bet. I don't know for sure. Yeah. He doesn't look like he's, you I, know. Honestly, I think he's another jujitsu guy too that spends plenty oh, of time doing that kind of movement. There you and, go. You know, for jujitsu, you need a special kind of physical intelligence, but you also need like the IQ, right? Yeah. Like that, that, that tradition, because it is so methodical um, when you're going, it's playing chess, right? But yeah. you're really wrestling with a guy. Body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but that, I mean, you're, you're, you're firing on all different levels, not just the physical level, right? You're really trying to understand. It's like the same way to get through like a brutal workout. You show up and you're like, you get through like that first stretch or just like, you know, you're just like, oh God, I don't want to be here. It's like, just check out, right? You're always going constantly with that battle over and over again. It's like, no, we can get through this. We can get through this. We can get through this. And you push yourself by the end of it. You're like 30 minutes into it. You're like, I'm there. Let's keep coasting. Like I'm in the space. I'm in the zone. Like this is my flow state. It's going to happen. And then honestly, by the time you get done, you're like, thank God I did that. Because I'll tell you every time, like anybody's ever walked out of the gym, like tell me you're still in a bad mood, Dude, right? Never. It's it's next to impossible, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 So, and that's the, that's the beauty of just showing up though. With um, what's going on in the world, when you mentioned Elon Musk and uh, immediately made me think about AI. What do you? How do you feel about AI in the fitness <laughs> space and all that? Yeah, I, we were talking about this briefly before yeah. we jumped on. Um, I, you know what? It's it's a huge. I think it's going to be a fun tool to use for a number of people. Um, for me. You know, I played with it the other day and I was like, because somebody was telling me, it's like, you're gonna lose your job. <laughs> and I was like, hey, build me a, a 12 week progressive overload program that's focusing mainly on lower extremities. Um, and I've got a, a blown out MCL from about 12 months ago and it will spit it out for me, right? Brrr, 12 week program, right? There's no nuance though, right? It's not as smart as we would like it to think it to be or something like that. And there's no creativity quite there yet. And I think it will come with time, um, but you can't, I don't think you can artificially put in intent and or um, like character traits and personality traits that guilt built, built into a lot of things. Hence yeah. why, you know, you go to a certain trainer for, for their knowledge or their expertise, right? Or you go to a certain person, it's like, yeah, if we were all just regurgitating the same crap over and over again, we'd all be the same thing. We'd all be robots yeah. doing those things. So I think that's the beauty of it, yeah. That was one of the lessons I learned when I, worked at uh you know true religion was one of the ones but at, uh, re in retail um was when you're selling and i think it's the same thing with real estate and, and many jobs in general is you're selling 
how someone's going to feel. You're selling your personality. You're selling you and that that moment they're having. Because what I learned is if someone's going to buy a 400 pair of a dollar pair of jeans, it's going to be because of how they feel in them. Mm. They feel like they have, you know, style. They feel like, you know, this is the highest quality thing. They're proud of it. You know, they, they, they have more confidence when they're wearing these things, you know, and it's that across the board with so many things. It's like that feeling we get from that is what's going to dictate the difference. And if you can generate a feeling in a fit group uh, setting, and yeah. they're enjoying themselves, they're having fun, they're breaking through their own barriers, they're doing all the things that are right for them, that's gonna be the difference between them sticking with it, them having success with it, and the same reason you know that you have been fit your whole life is that feeling you get out of it, right? Yeah. And so being able to transfer that to someone else is a gift in and of itself, um, but when people can get that for the, for themselves, it's just I think it changes the game with what we do and how we do it, and that's something that I think AI is never gonna be able to essentially do, because at the end of the day, okay, well then, you're going to say, here's the program, and then there's going to be some other AI that's going to say someone else, or or it's going to take us out of it, and then we're going to lose more touch with that physical part of ourselves, which is a part of the human experience. Yeah. The human connection, right? It, it, there's no, there's zero human connection with, with AI yet, but we're clearly not there yet. It's not even close. Yeah. But then there's movies out there that kind of like her with Walking Phoenix. Have you seen that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where he falls in love with the AI, right? So yeah, we're not even there yet, though. Yeah. That's like normal AI, and we're still at like the beginning of weak AI, which is yeah. like, look, we might get there quickly, but everybody's intrigued by it, right? Everybody wants to know more. I was down at Ursa this past uh, couple months, which is like a huge uh, fitness conference, and they have certain breakout sessions. And it's probably these rooms can sit two to 300 people per, per session, right? And you have all these great speakers, you know, talking about certain things and, you know, you get to sign up and kind of pop in. And I remember like each and every one of these speakers might've had like, I don't know, anywhere from 30 to 50 people in each of these kind of seminars. And then I walked into the AI one and the place is fucking packed, packed. And I think everybody's a little bit um, terrified, a little bit interested. And everybody I think is trying to figure out how to monetize it. Yeah. right especially in my industry and i think there will be a time and place but take away from the human interaction and kind of what you get naturally from what we do um I, it's gonna be really tough to replace that right i For think sure. everybody's trying to figure out it's like how can i how can i adjust my margins to now bring ai in how can i you know maybe lean out on staff or not hire on this this kind of person it's just like What's what's the intention with all that, right? It's yeah. just like you're you're not you're never going to have that experience base from AI. So yeah, yeah, wild. So with FitStop, you, the one in Santa Monica that was your grand opening is that the only one in America right now? Yeah, uh, just had our grand opening. Uh, we're literally about to open up Hermosa. I can't give any details away yet, but it'll ha it will happen basically middle of summer. Um, we'll have one down there, and then we have two additional franchise units in Philadelphia and one in New Jersey about to pop up as well too. Damn. So yeah, like we're we're moving quick, but we got honestly between the franchisees we're bringing on at those locations. Great people have been in this space for quite some time. Um, have seen the product, touched the product, um, but it like elated about the entire process. And yeah, I, I'm excited for those ones to, to to open up as well too. But yeah. Um, one one down, a thousand more to go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah, we'll have to. I mean, we'll have to come in for a workout soon, and uh, we'll get after it. I would Hell love yeah. to, honestly. I'm gonna get a giant workout in right after this. Like, I'm about to go to my home gym in the back and just fucking crush. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Well, dude, appreciate you. You've yeah. inspired me. Oh no, <laughs> dude, that was a blast. That was easy. That's good conversation. That's fun conversation. I could talk about this crap all day, but yeah, <laughs> dude, I appreciate it too. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm jonesing to get in that gym right Hell now. Hell yeah, but yeah, no, appreciate you, bro. Um, thanks for coming on, and uh, thanks for being fit. Hell yeah, bro. Thank you guys. <laughs> dude, appreciate it. It's fun, really. Yeah, it was fun, fellas. Appreciate it. We'll yeah, do it again bro. soon. Yeah, man. Thank you for watching Studio Twenty Two. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow our socials at Studio Twenty Two Podcast. Talked about this yesterday. <laughs> the true test of fitness. <laughs> <laughs> Where are these? Okay, this is the. Uh, Break it down. Oh, yes. Organic outdoor access. I can't say it's the best of. No, this what's is out like there. it's Whole Food brand, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's Whole Foods, yeah. Yeah. The ingredients are just organic egg whites. Egg whites. And the, th and the funny part is just like you look at this thing too, and it's like 10. 10 servings per this carton, right? Yep.
And it's just like the way that it breaks down to just 25 calories per serving. This is like literally the best thing you could throw down if you're like lean on your protein for the day. Yeah. At the end of the night, just burn. But the thing is, it's like it's getting past that like kind of texture and feel all the way down. We're going to chug this thing right now. I mean, I'm going to throw up right on this damn table <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of this thing. You want to go viral or not, bro? Oh, jeez. Egg whites to the brain. See, the thing is. Listen, it's either that or some Casamigos tequila. Your choice. Can, can we put like some honey in I'll these? I'll do the tequila. Something? Yeah. <laughs> Let's, you put honey in? Is that what you said? I put a little bit of honey in it. Oh, I've never done yeah, that. Yeah, put a little bit of honey in it, and it like it tastes sweet. That sounds good. good. Yeah. Will, what's going through your head right now? Mm. Uh, should I? I, I <laughs> this is the most meathead thing I've ever done yeah. in my entire life at the beginning of po a podcast. Hey, cheers, cheers brother. <laughs> Here we go. The egg white chug. Oof. The thing is. <laughs> I'm gonna need to put a nipple on this thing. Hold on. It's coming through the mic. <sighs> That's good. Oh, yeah. Clearly, I do this more often than you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty strong, though. I appreciate right, You don't that have to do I this. I appreciate bro. that they're cold, though. <laughs> yeah, not, no, I would not be doing the warm ones. Oh, my God. <sighs> well, now I feel better. Oh. <laughs> Pretty, pretty badass, honestly. Welcome to Studio 22. <laughs> All right. 